Hi, Charles Sizemore here. And for today's dividend stock of the week, I'm going to go to a stock that I've liked for a while now. I have, uh, up until recently, not been willing to recommend it in this setting, uh, simply because it didn't quite have long enough of a trading history to show up on our radar. Even now, it's still a little bit handicapped because um, our rating system really does need you know 10 years worth of data to, to fully capture a stock strength. The stock does not have that. But uh, I think the, the story is compelling enough, and I think it's strong enough in, in some of the, the metrics that, that are complete to, to, warrant, uh, to warrant dimension. And so with no further ado, let me introduce Dow Incorporated. Uh, ticker symbol D is in dog, or D is in David, I should say, O-W. Uh, Dow Inc. has no relation to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, it it's, it it's, was formerly Dow Chemical, it's gone through a few reorganizations and, and whatnot over the last, um, call it, you know, five, six years. Um, what we see now today, Dow Inc. is the latest iteration, and it's only been trading since about 2019. So uh, it's a brand new company, although it's one that's been around since the 1800s. So it's simultaneously new and old. At any rate, why do I like Dow? So if you've been listening to my, my recent podcast, you know that I really really am bullish on materials plays and kind of basic industries um, and just kind of inflation sensitive sectors. I really think that's where you want to be for the next several years. Now, obviously diversify, but if you want to tilt your portfolio in a particular direction, I think tilting it towards those gritty industrial stocks is really the way to go. It's, it's, it's really what's going to work over the next several years. Uh, my basic view is that the tech and growth trade, maybe it's not over, but I really um, I don't expect it to continue its leadership. In fact, in 2021, tech has not, not led. It, it's been more of these gritty industrial stocks that have led, and I expect that to continue. Uh, I expect that to be really the norm for the next five to 10 years. Uh, there will be periods within this range, of course, where uh, materials don't always lead. And in fact, recently over the last week, they have not. But I think this is this is where you want to put money for the next five to ten years. So uh, digging into it, you know what what does what, what does Dow do? Like what what do they actually make? Uh, they make specialty chemicals. Uh, they make plastic products. You know petrochemical pro products. Whenever I hear plastics, I always think of the movie The Graduate. Um, long story. Anyway, um, specialized plastics and stuff that you're never going to, to buy. Like you never look to see who makes the plastic bag you buy. You never look to see who makes the, the plastic on your car's dashboard or whatnot. These are all things that you, you don't care about. Like you don't know. This is all stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, engineers care about it. You know, professionals care about it. But, you know, in consumers like you and me, we never really see. So these guys, you know, apart from just plastic-based products. They also make an assortment of sealants, you know, high-end industrial paints, coatings, just stuff you never want to mess with. You know, that, that's what these guys specialize in. Uh, the stock has been doing very well over the last 12 months. Of course, virtually everything has done really well over the last 12 months, but, but Dow's uh, stock price really has done fantastically well. I expect that momentum to carry over um, you know, through the rest of this year and beyond. This is a dividend stock of the week. And so we have to talk about the yield, of course. That dividend yield right now is a little over 4%, uh, which is very solid in, in this environment, particularly since bond yields have actually been falling. Um, even in case you missed it, <laughs> bond yields really soared uh, for most of the second half of last year and into really the first quarter of this year. Um, for the last month or two, they've been sort of drifting lower again. So I think the the big yield spike that scared everybody, I really do think that's that's done or at least done for now. So, you know, with, with the 10 year treasury now kind of sinking back to, uh, you know, levels we did not think it might, you know, levels the investing public did not think it would sink back to again. A 4% yield is, is really quite attractive. That's something that you can really, um, you're, you're not going to find too many 4% yields in the normal mainstream stock market outside of things like business development companies, REITs, whatnot. In terms of just regular corporations, you're not going to find too many that yield more than this and do so safely. 
Now, normally I do like to talk about dividend payment history. That is sort of a moot point with this stock, um, seeing as how it's only been trading since it's really only been trading for less than two full years. So um, there's we don't really have any good data about its its history as a, a dividend stock raiser, although in its previous iterations, Dow was a pretty consistent dividend raiser. So again, this is a company that's brand new, yet also you know has been around since the 1800s. We kind of have to, it's kind of a mess to analyze, but 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 that's it in a nutshell. So looking at the, um, you know, whenever we, we recommend a stock, we like to be objective. We like to be analytical. We like to be cold, hard, and rational. We don't like to be emotional about it. Now, you see I'm excited about the stock. Clearly, I am emotional, but we also like to drill it down to the numbers to make sure we're not letting our emotions get the better of us. So when you do look at this via our, our green zone rating system, you will notice that it doesn't rate particularly high on its composite score. It rates a 40. Now, normally that would be in bearish territory and we would want to steer clear. But again, this stock has not been in existence long enough to actually rate properly. So we have several uh, rating factors that are sort of handicapped because of that. And I'll go through that. But let's so actually just go through all of them. Uh, it rates highest on value, and it rates a, a seventy-three there. I think that's I think that's a very accurate rating. Sometimes I always like to dig through and say, "Well, it rates this," but if you dig through the numbers, you can kind of see some nuance. No, in this case, it, this is just a cheap stock. It's a cheap stock in an industry that, even though it's been picking up, it's still a cheap industry. Investors really have not been looking at basic industries like this for a while. It, it, this has been a very out of favor sector really since 2008. So we're getting it when I, I believe sentiment is just now starting to turn, but it's still exceptionally cheap rating to 73 there. Quality, this is interesting. It rates fairly well on quality, it rates a 64. This is despite the fact that this stock is actually pretty significantly handicapped there. Now we, we rate um, quality is really a function for us for balance sheet strength and for profitability. We measure profitability a couple of different ways. One is returns on equity, returns on assets, returns on investment. Now that is measured over multiple periods, right? This is where uh, Dow really gets punished because the stock has only been trading since 2019, it doesn't get the full benefit of this rating. So the rating says it's a 64. This is despite the fact that it gets extremely low ratings on you know, the five-year rating, you know, the, the five-year metric because there's no data there. So um, I'm, I'm very comfortable saying that because I know based based on the company, based on the company's previous iterations, that that quality rating would be a lot higher than that. And I think as more data comes in, you're only going to see that score rise. And at 64, still not that bad. That's still, that's still a very respectable quality score, despite being you know, really understated there. Now, volatility comes in at a 56. That's okay. That's middle of the pack. You would expect an industrial stock like this to be fairly volatile. You know, that's how it is. This is a cyclical stock, and cyclical stocks generally do have more volatility than average. But at fifty-six, that's okay. Like we're not out, we're not in wild volatility range. We're, uh, in fact, we're still in the top half. Remember, a high volatility score means the stock is less volatile. So we're still in the less volatile half of all stocks in our universe despite operating in a traditionally volatile sector. Now growth here, it gets penalized again by the lack of data, it rates a 44. If you look at kind of shorter term metrics here, it does fine. Longer term metrics, it doesn't because it, there's, no data, there's no data feeding into the model. So take that, that rating with a, a big grain of salt. If you do believe as I do that the global economy is roaring back to life, the data shows that U.S. GDP is on par for a banner year, like I think the highest in, in decades. You look across the world at countries where uh, you know vaccination rates have been doing well and they're reopening the economy. It's the same everywhere. This is going to be a fantastic year for global growth, even in some of the emerging markets where you know the, things are still sort of locked down because the vaccine 
rollout's been kind of chaotic and, and not going so smoothly, even there, growth is picking up. So we are going to see excellent growth in the global economy and a gritty industrial stock like this will participate in that. I very, uh, very seriously expect that. Now, momentum, uh, it doesn't score really high here. It scores a 42. And I did find that curious. Um, the stock has had a really good you know, 12 months. Recently, it has lagged a little, and that is sort of chipping away at the fall at the uh, sorry the momentum score. I'm okay with that. There's still a decent. If you look at the the stock chart, it's a nice looking chart. Um, I, I do ex, you know, the, the the momentum behind the stock is there. It's not being captured in our momentum score to the extent I would like, but it's not what I would consider a deal breaker. And then finally, on size, it's a large company. It, it is what it is. It's a large cap. It rates a three. So that's it's very normal for a lot of the stocks I recommend to get penalized on the size factor because they tend to be larger cap stocks. I'm okay with that. What you sacrifice in kind of small cap growth, you gain, you, know, you, you, you get yeah, more stability and, and for a dividend stock, that, that's really which one. So overall, um, even though the stock does rate fairly low based on our, our metrics, I think it's it's deceptive. I think this is a stock that actually would, if you were to normalize our results for the lack of data there, I think you would see much, oh, I know, you would see much higher, um, a much higher rating. So I'm, I'm very comfortable recommending this. And I think this is one of those kind of sneaky stocks that no one's really necessarily expecting to do well. So if you get Dow, what do you get? you get a really nice competitive 4% yield in a world where bonds still yield nothing and that's not likely to change anytime soon. You get access to you know, what I would consider very strong cyclical growth over the next several years and, and likely beyond. And it goes far beyond US soil. I, I think global growth, really the last 10, 12 years has been a story about the US. I think the next 10 to 12 years here is gonna be a story about emerging markets and the rest of the world. So there you have it. If you want a good dividend payer with, uh, with great exposure to global trends, then Dow Inc's the way to go.